Hello everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Today we are playing a four color Omnath Emery ramp mid-range deck that user BMJ took to not one but two 5-0 finishes and MTGO modern leagues. Uh, it's pretty much the same list both times except in the newer iteration they put two more mystical disputes in the sideboard for a grand total of four mystical disputes. That's the version that we're going to play. So it's an Omnath deck. It is red, white, green, and blue. And it's just trying to use Omnath alongside like things like Ren and Six and Uro to get all those land drops to trigger Omnath's ability to gain you life, ramp you a bunch, and boop your opponent in the face and sweep their whole board. So that's kind of our main value town focus. The secondary one is Emery Lurker of the Lock, which we can use to recur like Mox Amber to ramp, or most likely gonna be using it to recur Mishra's Bobble to draw some cards. We can get even more artifacts via Karn the Great Creator, grabbing stuff from the sideboard. If that those hate pieces happen to die, we can get them back with Emery. We can get back things like Worm Coil Engine, Walking Ballista, just get a ton of value that way. And uh, yeah, this deck's an absolute cluster. So I really don't know what else to explain. It's weird. Um, but since it 5 0 two leagues back to back, I knew it had to be some serious business. So let's give it a try. And be sure to check out our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders, for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. If you'd like to try out today's deck and paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That's our TCG Player link, and anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel. It is the number one place on the internet to buy Magic the Gathering singles. And if you want to try today's deck out on Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off, and you can rent today's deck and play along with us. They're the most trusted and reliable Magic Online card rental service. It is what I personally use and how I do so much MTGO content for YouTube. And shout outs to our supporters over on Patreon. Their names have been scrolling down below. It is because of you guys this channel is possible. So thank you very much for your support. And a quick extra special shout out to The Real Shroom for being the top tier patron of the month. And if you would like to become a patron as well, the link is down below. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. All right, we are live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. This is four color Omnath. We went over the whole Omnath Uro thing and the Karn Emery. We got Kin and Bonder Prodigy. So whenever a non-land permanent is, uh, produces mana, it adds double that much instead or it adds an additional. So that's the whole thing with Emery and Mox Amber. And then we also got Springleaf Drum. So we can even use our Goose after it uses its food. Lotus Cobra is there for ramp when lands enter as well as Omnath. So if you pair Omnath with a fetch, that's nuts. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Sideboard, we got a place at a mystical dispute for blue decks. And then Gigantha as our companion, because it's free, we can. Um, Tor Mods Crypt, if we need to destroy the graveyard, but we don't have mana. Pything Needle for anti-anything that has an ability. Um, Damping Sphere for anti-Titan, Tron, and Combo. Liquid Metal Coating in case we're in a free position to start blowing up lands if the opponent's not threatening anything. And Staring Bridge for anti-aggro, Trinosphere for anti-storm, uh, Worm Coil Engine um, for life gain if we're going up against mid-range, or like Jun has a very hard time dealing with Worm Coil. Sundering Titan is there if, we, if the opponent is like three or four color, we need to blow up like three or four lands. Um, and then Engineered Explosives for just uh, decks that are going wide like Boggles. Um, and then Walking Ballista is just a backup finisher. And with that, we are ready to go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Cerulean Plains, and we are going to be on the draw here with some four-color Omnath. The opponent might think we're on green-white Eldrazi, because that's the only deck that plays Gigantha lately. Uh, that looks good. Let's keep that. So I think I start on the Goose rather than the Drum. I think that's how it works, right? Dogless Shrine off of Windswept Heath. What could this be? Is it just Abzan? Well, it's not Uro. They're not taking Uro, that's for sure. It's one of these three. It's not Springleaf Drum. It might be the Goose or the Lotus Cobra. Hey, Goose Emote. Black's Goose. They took the Lotus Cobra. All right. Grilled Goose. Grilled Goose. I'm guessing it's just Jund. I don't see what deck would fetch and shock a Godless Shrine off of a Windswept Heath if it wasn't Jund. 
And it's weird because like usually decks to play hand disruption play black fetches mostly and possibly only, but that's a green white fetch. So that's kind of weird. Yeah, so it's Abzan. All right, Rogren Trium. Okay, let's go Scalding Tarn. And let's get a basic island. Play a Springleaf Drum. Tap for blue here. And play Kinnon. We can B. When we play the goose again, we can B. Is that what that says? B or re? I can't see. What, what, what's that item that's underneath the R? Oh, it's a goose. What are these flax emotes? Is that, is that Ryan White? Is that R White Goose? Re Goose? Oh, so the Spring Leaf allows Kinnon to tap for mana whenever you tap a non-land permanent. So it doesn't say other. You can tap Kinnon for mana and it works. Technically, it's the drum that produces the mana. Hey, Broken Glass. Uh, wait, wait, one second, one second. So we're going to go with Uro here. So let's tap. Kitten for mana. Oh, wait. It adds an additional. Okay, let's go Uro. Alright, draw a card. And uh, I guess we're going to put the Trialm into play. And then let's go Misty, and then pass. Oh, actually, no, 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 I can sack the food, I can sack the food, and play a second row. So crack the, the vat, crack the vat, this adds Jeskai, so we have all our colors. I guess I want another, um, I guess I'll grab like a, um, doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Let's just grab a breeding pool. Oh, I had another basic force in there. I didn't see that. Oh, and this will add additional as well. Okay, I'm dumb. So I shocked for no reason as well. Totally forgot. But it's okay, we're getting some back. Oh, they have a spell bomb, dude. I didn't see that spell bomb there. Somebody should have told me they had a spell bomb. I wasn't looking. Oh, that's an Omnath. Oh, man. All right, we're going to have to rebuild because that Nihil spell bomb is definitely cracking. When you make a play and try to try and bait the opposition, that's giving them the goose. When you pretend run away and then turn on them and fight unexpectedly, that's a re-goose. Go geese don't run away, they fight. They flog. They don't they don't they don't fight you, they don't punch you, they flog you. Hey Nate. Too late, broken glass. Hey, Jade. I know, Jade. You say that all the time. Oh, I should have got another color fetch because then I don't have to tap an additional guy to play Omnath. So that was bad on my part. This is the first game of the day, though, so I'm still learning how to play this deck. 
it's still very confusing to me so i have to learn exactly how to play it but the person who built this deck mastered it because they 502 leagues back to back with it and i'm definitely struggling right now not knowing how to play it please give me a, a fetch land i would love a fetch land nope all right tap here for white tap here for red green blue omnath Oh, you have to draw a card when he enters. Cool. Oh, you know what? I should have saved that fetch. Oh, no. You know what? No, 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 no. Okay. So let's, uh... Let's just make a food with Goose. I want to save that fetch so that I can try to trigger the third ability of Omnath and sweep their board. As long as they don't kill Omnath. I have nothing to ramp into right now. I don't have a Karn. Because if I had a Karn, I would be able to ramp a bunch and then just go Karn Worm Coil. And I definitely don't want to grab Worm Coil as matchup because I do not want to um, get it pathed. So if anything, right now seems like a good time for like a Sundering Titan. I don't even know why Sundering Titan's in the board because it really hurts us. Well, technically not. All I'd have to blow up is an island and technically a mountain. Well, let's discard a cannon because we already got one. So we can go for Gigantha next turn, I guess. You still haven't found a good way to tell Maven that I have a crush on her. Would you do that? Would What would you do, Marin? You can do that all you want. I'm not stopping you. Or Kin and second ability. Oh, yeah, that's right. We have Kin and second ability. I forgot about that. Thanks, thanks guys, for letting me know about the abilities I have on board because I keep forgetting. I don't know this deck yet. And of course, they path Omnath. Alright, I guess I'm gonna just crack this, this land and gain life. Get a forest. Ooh, Karn the Dank Creator. I guess we can do that and go and grab a bridge. So let's go with um, Karn, and then we can go minus and let's grab a bridge, play a goose. I really hope they don't have a way to blow up the bridge. Because if they can't blow up the bridge, then we probably win with Karn. And with Karn, I'd probably go and grab a Ballista because creatures can't attack at this point. So Ballista can just win around them. Ooh, that's an Omnath. All right, let's minus. And do I go grab uh, a liquid metal coating at this point? Why didn't they do that on their turn? They could have found like an assassin's trophy or something. All right, they're letting it resolve. All right, so I have options. I can Sundering Titan right now and blow up one, two, three of their lands and put them on two. I'd have to blow up one of my mountains and I'd have to blow up one of my islands. But it's probably okay, because I still got plenty of mana. And then I'd put them back down to two mana. And then at that point, next turn, I can, like, take up Karn again, and then again, and then I can go and grab a um, Liquid Metal Coating and finish off the rest of their lands. 
Yeah, I think Sundering Titan seems good. All right. Let's go tap everything. Thundering Titan. And let's blow up Gala Shrine, Temple Garden, uh, Forest, and then my island, and then my mountain. Oh, no, no, no. I want to do that. There you go, pull up those. And then we can tap down Kinnon to make a food token. Oh no no, let's let's leave it up as a blocker because their their stone forge their stone forges can attack. So let's not let them finish off Karn. And let's just go like this and pass a turn. We'll make a food on their end step. And then we can proceed to Omnath, and then we can proceed to tick up Karn more. And they only have swamps. They're stuck on one color. So we successfully color screwed them. All right, they have another. That's probably going to go get a temple garden. And they're doing something for three mana right now. Overgrown tomb. So they don't have white anymore. So no more paths. Liliana's pretty good. I'm going to have to take up Karn a couple times and minus and grab a pithing needle. Or if I can manage to get down Omnath and get three land drops, then I can sweep their whole board. I'm going to sacrifice a goose. Thank you, opponent, for minusing Lily so I get to keep my Omnath. I really thought they were going to tick up. I feel like they had no reason to swing there. All right, there's land number one. So let's... Tap Kinnon for white, and then green, and then blue, and then red. And go Omnath. Oh, that's an Uro. Play a land. Sack the food for blue. Go green. Go Uro. Give me a land. 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 No. All right. Tick up on whatever. On Batter Skull. And then. I can actually. Oh. Because of Omnath, I can actually play um, a Pithing Needle here. So let's go and grab a Temple Garden. And let's shock it. Omnath is going to add a bunch of mana. Let's play a second Karn. And then let's keep this one. And let's minus this Karn. And then we will go and grab a Pithing Needle, right? Yeah, so go and grab a Pithing Needle and play it, naming Liliana. So in reality, I should have just grabbed Liquid Metal Coating there and played it because I don't really care about Lily anymore. Um, but I just felt like this is the smartest thing to do because every time I neglect the Liliana on board, I always end up paying the price for it. Thanks, Jade. All right, Amisha's booble. Okay, let's minus. I have no more food. I got to keep that in mind. Um, I could engineered explosives on three and blow up Liliana and Germ. I don't care about Lily anymore. Um, so I guess I grab. I think it's a little too late for liquid metal coating, so I think I just grab ballista, right, and start taking that up. Um, nah, let's grab liquid metal coating.
All right, let's see what they're going to draw. They're going to grab they're going to draw a forest. That's good. I draw another Omnath. I can use that one just to cantrip. They draw a forest and they can't do anything. This is going to be a grindy game against the rock, against Abzan Rock. All right, liquid metal coating on their overgrown tomb. And plus with Karn and blow it up. Play a Mox Amber. Tap Mox Amber for white. Actually, no, no, no. Undo. Tap it for red, white, blue, green. Um. Actually, let's let's use um the spring leaf drum tapping for green with this Omnath so that I can use like because I'm gonna legend rule it anyways. All right, draw a card. It's a minimo. That's good, Minamo, because I can get more triggers. I can pick it up and stuff. Um, all right, well, let's tap it for blue. Tap here, here. Do I have enough to activate Kinnon? I don't. All right, so let's just use this mana to tap Goose for food, and then we can pass a turn. My goal is to destroy the green mana so they can't Assassin's Trophy anymore, because Assassin's Trophy on bridge would kill me. Oh, it only untaps target legendary permanent. Okay. All right. So let's go liquid metal coating on Blooming Marsh. At what point are they going to scoop? Do they really still have an out? All right. Tap goose for food here. Oh, I got to I got to tap for green. All right, let's keep the new one. Let's tap for blue, whatever, 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 whatever. Activate Kinnon. Give me an Emery. There we go. There's an Emery. Mill four. And then uh, we can go with tap down Emery and grab Gigantha finally. And pass a turn. Once I blow up their forest, they have to scoop. It's just it's just over. Did they find the Assassin's Trophy in the last possible turn they had to find it? Did they really just do that? Oh, is it the tap tap concede? Wow. Wait, what did they blow up? They blew up Pything Needle. Okay. Well, thanks for not blowing up Bridge. Oh, they're going to make me discard Gigantha now. That's fine. Dude, I have Emery. I can get the Pything Needle right back. So I guess that blowing up the thing wouldn't have killed me. So Emery can get back Pything Needle. So play Pivy Needle, name Liliana of the Veil, and now we liquid metal coating targeting their forest, and plus Karn to blow up their forest, and we play a goose, make a food, and then we can go um, tab goose for mana. And activate Kinnon. Get a Lotus Cobra. And then now I feel comfortable grabbing a Walking Ballista. Karn can do the thing now. Sorry I couldn't read chat so much. It's like 
I'm, this game is like constantly I'm clicking things. It's like every single turn I have to do a million things. So it's like hard to read chat. Would you like to hear what you've done? Sure, what did you do? All right. Oh, there's a red and six. All right, so it's minus Karn. And we're going to say yes. We're going to finally go and grab Walking Ballista. And then we are going to tap Mox Amber for two red. We're going to Emery back another Mox Amber. We're going to play the other Mox Amber. Keep this one. And we're going to tap this one for green. And we're going to play red and six. And then let's use red and six to return a um, Misty Rainforest. Play Misty Rainforest. Um, gain life with Omnath, add some mana with Lotus Cobra. We're going to add blue, and then we are going to crack said Misty Rainforest and grab a Steam Vents, and we're going to shock it. Omnath is going to add four. Lotus Cobra is going to add one. We're going to add green, and then we are going to use um, our Springly. We're going to use Goose to tap here. We're going to use Goose to tap here. We're going to Springleaf Drum tapping here and then we're going to go dump all of our mana into this walking ballista that's a lot of mana there we go i don't care that i'm floating one all right now we have a 10 10 ballista and now we start firing away so let's pass a turn and see what you can do, opponent. Nice Castle Ardenvale you got there. <laughs> All right. So now let's tap for um, mana with Goose. Let's plus Ren and grab the Misty Rainforest back. And let's play it. And we're going to gain a bunch of life. We're going to add red. And then let's play Springleaf Drum. And then we're going to tap um, Lotus Cobra. And then we're going to tap Kinnon. And then tap here for blue. Emery is going to return Mox Amber. Play Mox Amber. Keep this one. Tap for green and then float a bunch of mana. Crack this misty rainforest, grab a hollow fountain, shock it, add a bunch of mana, add a red and then add four. Keep tapping, keep tapping, keep tapping. Tick up ballista. Tick up ballista. Tick up ballista. Take a ballista. Take a ballista. And we're one short. We are one mana short. I repeat, one mana short. Um, all right, so let's use um, liquid metal coating. And pass turn. Oh, I could have made a food there with Goose. They're trying to find Fatal Push like so desperately, but it's okay because I have Emery to get it back. If they were to try to kill Ballista, I can get it right back with Emery. I thought I was going to totally die this match because of the amount of interaction they got, but this deck was, it was resilient. Finally, they scoop it up. All right. They're trying to play us for timer, I think. They're trying to play us in the timer, trying to make us run out of time here. So I don't need Mystical Disputes and all the rest is artifacts which stay in the board for Karn. So we submit it right back. We basically only sideboard if they're blue and they're not blue. So this deck is really easy to sideboard with. You built a humane animal farm, built a wheat potato and carrot farm, and I'm currently renovating a two-story house with smelted cobble, made a diamond pickaxe, and I'm about to make diamond armor all in three days from being a noob. That's pretty good. A little bit of tutorials can go a long way. Don't worry about reading chat. 
it's a complicated game and you're a really good player. I'm not that good. <laughs> I mean, I do a heck of a lot better when I'm not streaming because I have, uh, like, I don't have to, like, talk to you guys. So I'm, like, just thinking in my own head and, like, thinking out my lines of play a lot better. But when I'm, when I'm commentating, I miss some things. <laughs> Maven's good in Pokemon. Okay, I'll, I'll take that one. I feel like I'm better at Pokemon than I am at Magic the Gathering. What's your favorite brand of amp? You just bought a Line 6 today. The Line 6 uh, Spider 3s are always pretty trustworthy. I think I I have a Spider 4 over there. Um, best amps, though, I like orange, to be honest. Very, very vintage feel. Also, because, like, just IRL... Orange is my favorite color, so it's just like I'm biased. Honestly, Fender amps are pretty dang good. You might think that a brand like a guitar brand amp would not be good, but Fenders are actually decent. I'm not a fan of Marshalls. I've played on... I, I used to have a couple Marshall amps before, and I didn't really like them. Maybe it's because I bought them used. Uh, Alright, so what are we doing with this hand? We don't have any legendary permanents to produce mana with Mox Amber, so this is going to be a mulligan. This one is very scary, because if I don't top deck a land, I'm screwed. But I don't want to go to five. But if I get turn one Thoughtseize, we're screwed. I'm going to try it and throw away Karn for now. Because if I draw second land, then Ren is just going to produce mana forever oh it looks like they did have it that's a shame i'm guessing they're taking ren ren or, or springleaf maybe maybe amber they take ren yeah Ooh, emery helps a lot emery helps a bunch Let's get Breeding Pool because it's our main colors. Play this so they don't thought seize it. Uh, Marshals are okay for metal. I mean, yeah, they, they got decent distortion. Um... Oh, another one I'm a super big, another amp brand I'm a super big fan of is Roland, believe it or not. A lot of people hate Roland, but I, I like the, the acoustic setting on Roland amps. They do their acoustic setting way better than any other amp brand does. Like, seriously. If you ever used a Roland, just try, try out the acoustic setting. It literally sounds just like an acoustic guitar. And me, as mainly an acoustic guitarist, I can vouch for that. And they did have another Inquisition, that's why I played the thing. Um, alright, play Emery. Mill a bunch. Tap Emery for mana. For green. And play Lotus Cobra. Play Windswept Heath. Add green, crack the windswept teeth, and let's get a, a stomping ground. Add whatever, add whatever, put Gigantha in our hand, and pass turn. The opponent looks like they're on a little bit of an awkward draw right now. I have a feeling they don't really like their hand. They did mulligan and they were on the play, so that's not good for them. And I feel like they definitely should have taken Emery, because now I can start getting back that Mishra's bobble and I turned on my Springleaf drum. Hey Kyrie, good to see you again. Roland's roll, you had an electric drum amp of theirs. Yeah, Roland's are good, I like Roland's. You never really got into the gear side of guitar just playing, that's why I like line six in their presence. Okay, 
Let's get this straight. Line six are good for beginners. I'm not calling you a beginner because I don't know if you are, but line six are pretty, they're affordable. Let's just say that. They're affordable and they, in my honest opinion, I don't mean to hate on them, but I don't think they sound very good. Their distortion is like way overdone and it's hard to redeem it with the setting knobs. Like, I don't know. I just, I've owned two or three line sixes in my life and I've, I've never been like a super big fan of the sound. It's just way overdone. All right, let's go for Gigantha here. And start trying to win via beatdowns. I assume they're going to path this. They shriek mod. Shriek mod's a weird one for Abzan midrange. Go bagpipes. Yes, Jade, you say that a million times. Behringer's are better cheap amps than line six, Ivo. I've never heard of Behringer. Oh, that's a bigger goif than my Gigantha. But it can add five mana. Can't pay generic costs. So it can pay for like, colorless spells, right? Oh, no, no. It only pays for colors. All right. So let's use Emery to get back Bobble. Start drawing some crads. Play Booble. Play Goose. Hey, look at that. Goif Shrank. What do you know? Let's just keep Gigantha back on defense, just in case they can't grow their Goif. They're going to need to get an artifact in the grave, and I'm not going to let them do that. This deck would kind of get wrecked by Rip. Maelstrom Pulse on Gigantha. All right. See if we get beat down by a vanilla, a vanilla two drop because that's how good Goyf is. We should have this though. Like we're starting to draw a bunch of cards. We're going to be able to crack our foods to gain life. All right, bobble them. See what they're drawing next. Batter Skull. All right, um, let's not crack our food yet. Ooh, Uro. All right, play Uro. Okay, um, let's hold control. Hold control on Uro. Green, whatever, blue. Hold control. And with these abilities on the stack, tap Uro for green and then sack him um no lands into play and then let's go for a blue and then let's play a mox amber keep this one tap for another blue and then tap gilded goose for a green on the food and then let's get Uro back Pitching Karn, um, Red and Six, Karn, so we missed the Planeswalker archetype, and then Lotus Cobra, and Lotus Cobra. And he doesn't get sacked now, and now I have a 6-6, six, six, and I gain life, cool. No lands going into play, but let's play a Bobble. All right, let's use Emery to get back a bobble. Just draw a bunch of cards, because that's what Emery's good for. Man, this deck is powerful. I didn't think it was going to be this good. Make Uro play, pay for themselves. Yeah, see, you can sack, you can hold control and like tap it, like the thing on it. That's fine. You can have that or I don't need it. <laughs> 
they ought to scoop at this point, like honestly. Like even if they kill Uro, I'm getting it right back. And I'm drawing a million cards with Emery, so you gotta kill that too. So I have two things on board that they have to deal with. And if they can just like deal with both of them like right now, then we lose, but I doubt that's gonna happen. Like they mulligan to six and their hands awkward. I mean, they have gas. We know they have gas because they're not playing lands. All right, draw a couple cards. They're drawing Luris. All right, Luris is fine. They have nothing to get back with it. Give me an uh, um, Omnath. Come on. That's not Omnath, but that's a Karn. That is a Karn. All right, so let's go to combat and let's swing with Uro. Let's put Scalding Tarn into play. And let's go with uh let's go with Karn. Actually, Karn can't defend himself from this position. Let's just play the minimo and then let's go with Karn. And minus, and now we go and grab liquid metal coating. I think that seems like a, it seems like an appropriate time for liquid metal coating, in my opinion. So let's crack the Scalding Tarn. Let's go and get a basic island. Tap here and tap here. Go and play liquid metal coating. And now the opponent's a tiny bit screwed. I'm going to leave back both of my defenders because I really want Karn to live. Leave just back both of these blockers here. Make sure Karn can survive. Because if Karn survives, I probably win. <laughs> Karn coding is nasty. Luris is okay. I'm gonna blow up that dogless shrine right there. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna blow up forest. I don't want them to have green for Assassin's Trophy. And then they're stuck on black white. All right, there. Liquid metal coating on forest. Blow up forest. And let's um, go green, whatever, whatever. Play another Uro. Keep this Uro. We can untap our Uro at instant speed, so that's going to be fun. Let's leave this uh, Scalding Tarn in hand to Sandbag. And let's go to combat and attack with Uro. Uh... Sure, put it into play, whatever. Hopefully they forget I have Minamo. Minamo. Let's see. All right, pass turn. Hey, Crimson Claw. Come on, swing both, swing both. Yes. Yes! Didn't see that, did ya? Or do they have path? If I get them here, they're totally screwed. I might be able to flawless them, defeat their whole entire board, and then leave them with zero permanence. They don't have green to get back Goyf either. Sure, card can go to one. He's still alive to blow up lands. That's all I need. 
All right, they found green. They're getting the goif back? That's fine. All right, um, tick up on Blooming Marsh. Carnet. Go with Kinnon. Play a Misty Rainforest. Tap Kinnon for blue. And then, actually, no, 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 no. Actually, yes, tap Kinnon for blue. Tap this for green, and then here, 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 and activate Kinnon, which I should have done second main phase. Omnath, hello. Draw a card, play a Mishra's Bobble. Crack it, see what they're gonna draw next. And use Emery to get back Mishra's Bobble. Play Mishra's Bobble. Um, crack here. Go and grab a basic forest. Um, now is going to gain me four life. Crack here. Go and get a hollow fountain. Shock it. Um, now is going to make four mana. Tap here. Tap here. Tap here. Activate Kinnon. Grab a Lotus Cobra. Crack the bobble again on them. Go to combat. Swing Omnath or Uro, whatever. Say no. They're down to four, and I have blockers. I'm drawing more cards. I mean, do your worst, opponent. I'd like to see you come back from this. <laughs> Are we getting some GGs? Hey, Scratch, good to see you again. Opponent attacks us and attacks us. All right, liquid metal coating on their godless shine. Plus on it. Go to combat and swing all. All right, opponent got a darkness. No darkness. All right, taking down uh, Abzan. That match was hecka long. That was a 45 minute game. 45 minutes. I mean, I don't know. Like, I feel like I want to leave that one unsped up in the video because it was a very, like, it was a good game. It was like a perfect showing of this deck, just grinding it out how it does. And this is probably how the person like 5 would two back-to-back -back leagues with it. This thing just like can come back from crazy deficits. And at the beginning, since it is the first game, I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't make misplays, but it was awesome. Like we learned halfway through how to play it and just the ins and outs and all the little cool little tricks you can do. There's so many lines of play with this deck. You got to figure out exactly what you can do with the abilities you have. Like I was forgetting so many abilities because there's so many at your potential. It was like, I was looking at Omnath and like the way he generates a bunch of mana. And I was like, what can you possibly do with this much mana in this deck? And it turns out there's so much you can do. And just sinking it into Kinnon, go and grab Gigantha, playing Karn and using it to go and grab something huge. Because I was like, again, like, why do they have Sundering Titan in the sideboard? As it turns out, you can produce enough mana to play that thing. I was like, we're never going to have the mana for that. But it turns out we do. And this is only a 20 land deck, but somehow it makes it do. Because, like, it's got the Mox Ambers and the Springleaf Drums and the Geese. And it utilizes them very well alongside the Kinnon. So this deck, like... It feels like this person's been working on this deck for a while and they just perfected it. So it was really cool. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. One game was cut from the video because it was a misclick. And that's just BS. Not going to put that in the video. Anyways. I know, I know, there was only one game non-sped up, and there's only going to be one game sped up. 
That's right. We only had a total of basically two games with this deck because it was okay to date the longest deck that we played on the channel. It was the grindiest, most like the games were the longest that we've had. So this game being sped up was just as long as the first game being sped up. As you can see, we're going up against black, white zombies. And uh, I feel like I could have played this game better. And that already kind of hints at the results. Um, but yeah, this game, it was kind of scary because the opponent, like, because we're kind of causing a board stall. That's kind of what this deck does until it can find the value it needs to win or until Karn fetches the Ballista. If it's like a game that's going to be a board stall, like Creature v Creature. And that's exactly kind of what this was. And uh, I ran out of, like, card advantage right away. Like, I was just trying to find, like, a bobble or something for Emery. I found a Karn, and uh, I think something happened to it. I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, that's right, Tide Hollow Sculler. I blame this match on the fact that they got quad Tide Hollow Sculler back to back to back to back. That's right, four turns in a row, back to back Tide Hollow Scullers. That was pure luck, and they took some of my stuff. They whiffed some of my stuff. Um, but yeah, they, they were able to even buy back Tidal of Sculler. So the way they're doing this is they're able to sacrifice Tidal of Sculler to Carrion Feeder and then buy it back via Lord of the Undead and vial it in on our draw step and just take any cards we might draw. So that was definitely a problem. There was a time we were able to sneak in a few cards. So what I wanted to do is get Karn to grab a Piving Needle. Now... When I got the Pie the Needle, I wasn't sure if I wanted to name Lord of the Undead, which is the thing that's allowing to, them to recast their zombies in the graveyard, or if I wanted to name Carrie and Feeder, the thing that's sacking the stuff so they can get it back with the Lord of the Undead. I wasn't sure. Uh, like, in hindsight, maybe I should have named the other thing that I didn't name. Don't remember exactly what I did name. The opponent started swinging in, and I was trying to survive by gaining life with Goose, and I'm just constantly play praying, like, please, Dad, give me a card that I can play. Because, like, they were taking a lot of my cards with their Tide Hollow Scullers because we were just kind of dirtling. I was getting down to very little life, and I'm constantly trying to stabilize with these foods. I, I Like I said, I really feel like I could have played, like, something a little bit different to make it work. Um, now, this Karn definitely needs to grab a bridge. I just got to make enough mana for it. So, I Karn, and, like, here's where I'm thinking maybe I should grab Pything Needle. Maybe, I, like, I end up grabbing what appears to be engineered explosives because if i engineered explosives on two uh that would actually um take care of a lot of their guys a lot like all their title of scholars their wayward servant their relentless deads so i decided to do that and lower their board state a lot um but i do not deal with the lord of the undead and carry and feeder so they're just going to be able to get stuff back with the the lord of the undead anyways and get back that wayward servant that's draining us out whenever creatures enter so i really feel like that's why i screwed up grabbing the engine explosives yeah it was appealing to wipe out five creatures um but at the end of the day like maybe i should have grabbed either a bridge or a needle because it's it's not the attacking that was really killing us more it was the triggers um so yeah uh, that's gonna be a good game to zombies they fought it out pretty well and like we are turning the game around at this point but we are just a tiny bit too late like one turn too late so let's go on to the wrap up hope you enjoyed all right so unfortunately we were only able to have two games in the video because this deck took incredibly long to grind out but the deck's incredibly powerful like if you are like this is very much a deck with a learning curve there's so many lines of play that you can do that like you really have to master this deck to be able to run it very well and this deck you can do super well with if you're like a really good magic player you can do super well with this deck it's a very very unique very out there deck that i really wouldn't have expected to ever exist it's just a combination of a bunch of other synergies that just shouldn't go together, but they do. And it just works out so well. I would highly recommend playing this deck if you're like a decent enough magic player. I would very much recommend trying it because it's incredibly powerful and a lot of fun. It has so much little synergies. And I love how Emery worked alongside Kinnon and how it produced a lot of mana um, for like Omnath and stuff and like... It just it's weird i wouldn't expect putting these things together but it just it just happens to go so well and karn is a nice little win con the deck's not really missing anything except for a way to remove stuff i think what could use um 
trial and error is the sideboard like different kinds of pieces but i feel like it has for the most part everything it needs i like how the the deck just produces so much mana that it can play anything like sundering titan and worm coil no problem we can ramp up to those super fast via omnath like things like lotus cobra generates so much mana the deck feels very solid that's all i can say so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest the gameplay every other day we upload our mtg gameplay every monday wednesday friday and if you want to catch one of these live streams the twitch link is down below in the description we stream our magic the gathering gameplay all night long on mondays for like six or seven hours and we stream variety through the rest of the week tuesday through friday if you want to come out and see some other games so check out the twitter link is down below and if you want to try today's deck out for yourself consider signing up with mana traders in the link down below using the code marin moon to save 50 percent off and you can rent today's deck and play along with us and if you want to try today's deck out on magic on oh wait i already said magic online and paper consider purchasing through our deck list link down below that's our tcg player link and anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel and a special thanks to all of our supporters over on patreon for making this channel possible i actually recorded a new patreon outro that you're going to see here in a second so i hope you enjoy the video and i'll catch you in the next one peace out thank you so much to our supporters over on patreon for making this channel possible patreon is a platform where you can financially support the content creators you love and if you would like to go the extra mile and help monetize these mtg video creations so i can keep doing this kind of content the patreon link is down below in the description but if you'd like to support the channel for free, hitting that like and subscribe button down below is well enough for me. And a quick special thanks to our top tier supporter this month, The Real Shroom. And that's about it guys, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.